God bless you. Let's uh, turn to page 105 and let's see how beautiful heaven must be. Stand if you have a like to Thank you. 
out for a prolonged period of time. We did a couple of times when folks got the uh, told us they had COVID just out of you know, abundance of caution. We've not had to shut our church down. God's been awful good to us. The folks within the church have yeah. gotten sick, have gotten better. We thank the Lord for that. And that's not something to take for granted. So. Somebody else with a prayer request tonight? Well, John, I talked to Rich today. One of the hospitals, they have a dehydration treatment or something because he dehydrated. So. Yeah, yeah, Miss David told me this morning the first thing that I try to check out a couple times a day because he's been down some for the last few days. And he was trying to push liquids and we couldn't push enough to overcome the dehydration supply. <coughs> I'd be, I hope they didn't keep him. I'll talk, talk to him after church. Thank you, David. Somebody else, Miss Jackie? I have a cousin that lives in Holland and she's so far supposedly cancer free but she's still not doing good and then she has ups and downs bad days good days you can pray for her i'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll. any other requests to that i continue to pray for our son last mother she's not doing well at all they're calling in hospice on her tomorrow so keep her in your prayers we will be sure anybody else now, all those with an unspoken request you should have raise your hand and uh, Brother John, would you ask God's blessings on all these prayer requests? You know, uh, Joe, Brother Joe Sorensen went out to, Bill gave us an invitation to their four-year anniversary out here for the AA meeting tonight. And I appreciate Joe and God. That, that could be a ministry right under our uh, roof here. Maybe we get some of those folks in the rest of the church. Let's pray for that. Brother John, Father in heaven, let's call your name again. Lord, we thank you for this day. For each blessing, we thank you that you blessed us this week. Yeah, we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for everyone that's come out tonight, Lord. And we pray for each request that was given. We pray for Brother Rich, Lord, that you might yes. strengthen him, Lord, and help him to get over his dehydration, Lord. And we pray for Rick Young that you help him to come through the trials and tribulations they're going through, Lord. And let everyone that's here, Lord, that's got family members that are sick, pray that you bless them, Lord, and help their family members to get well. And most of all, that all the family members know Jesus. Jesus. Pray that you have your way in this service tonight. Bless everything that's said and done. We want to feel your praise you today. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother John. Anybody have a testimony you'd like to share tonight before we have a couple of songs? I have a question. Yes. But you mentioned a terrible accident at Roscoe and the Grove. Is it just me that you think, or, or is it your perception too, that people are driving a lot faster? I mean, I'm, I'm driving the way I always drove, and I'm in the way. I, I, I pull off side of the road sometimes to speed let people go by. And then they, you know, give me obscene gestures sometimes anyway. I, I just wondered if that was just me, or who was I mean, I look up the road and nothing's coming. I pull out and it's there on me. Couldn't even see him before. But anyway, all right, good. Just wanted to say that. I'm not going crazy. Right? I think that people uh, people have less patience because all's going on around them a lot of times these days. By all means, yeah. <laughs> if they tell you that, just know that you're number one in all of our book. Oh, see, Bill Rowe has a lot of accidents. It does. It has a lot of Tina stuff. came flying in here today, and she said it was because the car was following too close on her. And I said, you slow down and let them do what they do. I'm afraid they'll hit me. <laughs> They're not going to hit you. They might go around you, but they're not going to hit you. I didn't come in the church. So she was lying. <laughs> I was standing in the church. I didn't come in the church. I'm okay. Sorry, sorry. All right. All right. Miss Jackie, you want to sing tonight? Sure. Miss Dorothy, would you like to sing when you see Miss Jackie? Got you, please. <laughs> Yes. 
I believe he knew God would deliver, but he was willing at least to go. And in today's lesson, we find just almost the opposite kind of guy. Years had passed now, and last uh, week's lesson, I think, was about the, the ark. You remember that? Right. Yeah. But now he's, uh, you know, he was, he's king, and uh, and his, his heart has changed, it seemed like. He, you know, where his heart said, his heart was for the Lord back when he fought, fought and laughed. But now it's his own self he's thinking about. In chapter 11 of 2 Samuel, uh, it tells us that uh, <clears throat> at that particular time that Israel was in a, in, in a battle, which they was a lot of time, and it said that it, at that time, it was a time of that year that the king usually <coughs> would have to fight with the, with the uh, uh, army. But David chose not to go. That was a mistake, wasn't it? We all know what happened yes. in the following verses of this chapter. It says that he was uh, out one evening on this house top. You know, they had flat tops in those houses, a lot of them, you know. And uh, I was wondering what kind of roofs they had. They had rubber roofs in them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but he's looking around, and we all know the story about how he's seen Bathsheba, and she's about to say she's washing herself. And we don't know exactly where she's at. Maybe in her. Uh, bathroom with no shades on the windows, perhaps, I don't know. But he's seen her. And uh, she was, uh, said she's a beautiful, beautiful woman. And, uh, and David sent and inquired after her. And I, I, I noticed what one of his servants said, hey, is this somebody else's wife that you're inquiring about? I'm not sure if he said that to David or said to some other uh, servant. But anyway, he was concerned about what David was up to. Uh, so it says uh, in verse 3, and David sent messengers and took her. You know, we always wonder, you know, what kind of a attitude or part did she play in this uh, adultery scheme? But it says that they took her. That kind of indicates to me that right. they made her go. You know, and, and after all, though, he was the king, and, and if she didn't obey the king, what's going to happen, you know? So, uh, it says they knew. took her. But he knew at that time was why she was. Yeah, he knew. It sounds to me like she's right next door. <laughs> Must have been his neighbor, huh? But, you know, maybe he didn't know her, but he knew who she was because the servant. That was no excuse, was it? Because the servant that told him, this is uh, Uriah's wife. So, David had her come over, and it wasn't for just a social visit, was it? It wasn't a get acquainted. Uh, they got acquainted all right, but in the wrong way. Uh, some thought maybe David had started falling away from the Lord before this. It's a good chance, isn't it? Where'd his mind been? You know, was he still that young guy that wanted, young man that wanted to serve God and risk everything he had to serve God. It doesn't sound like it. it sounds like maybe his mind had been wandering. He wandered in the wrong place here. Uh, before we go any farther, let's kind of, let's apply some of the things to ourselves. How do we stay on guard against temptations? David was tempted here. He yielded to it. And we're all going to be tempted. If we're not, we're not be living be on guard. guard. <laughs> we want to actually be on guard. Right? How do you do? How do you do that? How do you stay on guard, though? Keep your eyes on God. Yeah. Keep right. a close walk with God. What else? Surround yourself with other people who do the same thing. Right. Yeah. Don't put yourself in the position yes, you have to, to, to be tempted. And that's the question this way. Stay away from him. How, how many years has David been king now? Any idea? No, I'm not. I'm not sure. A what? Yeah, yes. it, it, it's been a while. Yeah. Power corrupts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? How else can we stay on guard against it? Do your job. 
David had been doing his job, he wouldn't have seen that. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Know what your temptation is. <coughs> what, what tempts us? The same thing, don't tempt everyone, right? Yeah. But be aware of what's going to tempt us. Then, don't look at it, stay away from it. Surround yourself, like Joe says, stick, surround yourself with Christians, people that you can trust. They don't, don't go around them. If you've got a, a drinking problem, where are you going to stay away from the people that drink, right? If you've got a gambling problem, you don't go into casinos, right? You don't get on a computer and start playing, even though they surely do push that nowadays, don't they? Have you noticed? Just about every billboard nowadays advertises something that's sinfully wrong. Yeah. Gambling, marijuana, booze, all these things. I know a young guy that got married and he was asking a guy that was divorced how he kept from getting divorced. I don't think that'd be very good advice. <laughs> See, I think about Joseph and when he was sent to my father's wife, he was friend, didn't give himself a chance to, uh, you know, to fall prey to that. He ran, ran That's out why he ran, wasn't it? Yeah. He said, he, he thought, if I stayed here long enough, I'm going to fall for this temptation. Exactly. That's, a, that's a good thing to do. How can we guard against complacency? What does complacency mean? Our English teacher tells us what that means. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nothing about to be, to be comfortable and smug. Right. Yeah. You're satisfied with yeah. your position the way you are. You'd have no interest in advancing yourself. <coughs> so, as Christians, should that be us? Should we be, inter be interested in just staying like we are, you know, not interested in advancing ourselves in the knowledge of God, uh, being more pleasing to Him, more helpful to our other brothers and sisters? No. You know, they in coaching, there's a, there's a saying that you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You can't say the same. I think you can advance without being sinful about it, though. Yeah, the Bible says that without a vision, the people perish. So if you didn't have a goal in life, you wouldn't be here very long. Ago. So how can we guard against that? What's some things we can do to guard against complicity? Yes, <coughs> Strong faith in God. Yeah. Bible reading. Prayer, stay in God's word. Feel to still wet for arms. Yeah. Serve others. Maintain accountability with others who also wish to grow closer to God and repent of sin daily. I think when we show up here, we're showing an interest in growing for God. If we did, we wouldn't be here, right? Okay, moving on to David now. So <clears throat> she went home. Found out she's going to have a child. She sent back and told David. David probably wasn't very happy. He starts scheming how he can uh, get by with this. And we all know the story how that uh, Uriah was off the battle. So uh, David had an idea. Oh, I'll just send for David. I'll bring him home and go, go visit his wife. And uh, he'll think the child's his. Well, that didn't work, did it? Said when Uriah was coming to get coming to him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and the people did, and how the Lord prospered. And David said unto Uriah, Go down to thy house, and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him uh, a mess of meat from the king. So Uriah left David. David sent a big old meal over to him. David said, I got that made. I don't have to worry now. Going home to his wife. Hadn't been with her months, probably. Now, he'll surely go home just one but we know that he didn't. So, but Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house. And when they had come, they had said, Uriah went not down to his house. David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? <coughs> and didst thou not go down to thy house? Uriah was at this point, David was a better man than David. Yeah, he said, <coughs> he said, the ark of God's ark is, stays in a tent. He said, Israel is in tents. No, the army sits out there fighting. He said, they're living in tents. My general, uh, my lord, he called Joab. He's sleeping in a tent. 
He said, I'm going to go enjoy the luxuries of home and a life. I'm not going to do it. Well, David had to think of something else to do. What did he do? Shut him out in front of the battle. Before that, though. He got him drunk. Yes. He got, he got more, invited him over, had a few beers or shots or whatever. He got him drunk and said, well, he'll go home now. You know what? Uriah was a better man drunk than David was sober at that point. Because <laughs> right. he just still didn't go home. So David come, David come up with this plan. I just have to get rid of him. So he writes out a, a, a note, a letter to Joy out the general of the armies. Put Uriah at the front of the battle where he's going to get killed. Sit his own death warrant by him. Take this letter, he said. You know. Must have, it had to be sealed by the king. He opened it. Uh, he would think like he enjoy it and knew it. But being the honors, honorable man that he was, he wouldn't open it anyway, would he? I don't think. So he hands the uh, envelope to uh, Joab. Joab sends him right to the front of the lines. And uh, so he was killed. And so Joab sent a messenger back to David. <coughs> He said, now, here's what you tell him. Now, Joab had made a mistake as far as the general. He had sent all the army, some of the army all the way up to the walls, the fort walls, and caused a lot of the army to get killed because they were shooting arrows down at them. And even one man got killed by a woman. Abimelech says that like, a woman threw a, a big stone down. And what's, what's worse than getting killed in battle? Getting killed by a woman? At that time, that would be a pretty bad thing. That's dishonorable. So, he said, when you go back to Dave, David, he said, you tell him about these things. And if he gets mad at you because I didn't do right with the army, he said, you tell him, can you rise again too? He said, that'll appease him. And he did. So he goes home, goes back to the king and told him, your rise did. Verse 28, 6 says that when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the mourning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house. And she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. You know, the thought came to me that in all this wrongdoing, God never interfered with David's plans. What he let him go ahead and sin, didn't he? You know why? Because that's, yeah. that's the way God is. He lets us do what we want to, don't he? Yeah. We get into trouble. It's our fault. If you sin, no robots. Right. That's what a free will is. <coughs> so he never interfered with him. He could have. <clears throat> so in verse chapter 12, we know the story of the prophet. Nathan was David's prophet, kind of like a personal prophet, I think. This is the way God told David things to Nathan. Nathan come to him and told him a little story, and you all know, know how it goes. Nathan said there was a rich man who had all kinds of sheep, all kinds of goats. He was rich. He had everything he wanted. He had a visitor. Traveler. And he came to him, and he was, the rich man was going to make a feast. But he didn't take his sheep. He goes to a man that had nothing but one little sheep. I want you to notice how, what he said about this sheep. But the poor man had nothing, save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat, and not drank out of his cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a dog. You ever see people who got pets, dogs? They feed them from the table. They don't care what to eat out of their own plate or not. Mm -hmm. You know, they sleep in their beds. You know, that's what I was just saying. You know, he's up in his bosom. He cared more as much about this little lamb as he did 
his, uh, his own daughter. It was his, like a daughter to him. It was a household pet. So this rich man took this little lamb and killed it and served it to his traveler. And, uh, and David's, David, in verse 5, says, And David's anger was greatly kindled against this man, and said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, that was the Lord. <laughs> That's going to talk about the Lord, right? As the Lord liveth, the man that has done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Verse 7 says, And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Boy, don't you know that knocked David down? You know, it took a lot of nerve to say that. <coughs> I sure did. Yeah, but I think David had respect for Nathan as God's man, though. So you're the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives. David had plenty of wives. He just wanted somebody else's wife. You know? Uh, and gave the, the house of Israel and of Judah. In other words, he made him king. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. God was willing to give David anything he wanted, except somebody, some, somebody else had. Wherefore thou hast, <clears throat> wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord? What commandments did you break? Don't murder through lying, murder. Just to name a few, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what could have been going through David's mind when he was doing all this? Not the right thing, right? Yeah, we know I wasn't going through it, right? Huh? So we know I wasn't going through it. Exactly. You know, the, uh, I guess the lust of the body got to it more than the love for the Lord. You know, I think this is maybe one of the bigger issues in our society today and why you don't see more folks coming to the Lord. And maybe why you don't see a lot of folks growing in the Lord to have come. Because they want to see that they want to see the message that's applied to everyone else but themselves. You know, they, can't, they can't see themselves in it. Exactly. <laughs> He said, Wherefore thou hast despised the commandment of the Lord. <clears throat> I mean, he said, he said despise. He didn't just say break it, did he? You despise God's word. <laughs> to do evil in his sight, thou hast killed your rider. David didn't personally take a sword and kill him, but God said, You killed him. You know what run through my mind when I read this? How about all these lawmakers that say, It's okay to kill a baby. And his mom didn't want they killed that baby. These judges and lawmakers that make these laws, they're guilty of millions of deaths yeah. because of the decisions that they made. Not only them, what about the doctors that do the thing? They're guilty of murder too, aren't they? And the doctor takes an oath to save lives. Yeah, how about that? Then saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thy own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbors, and he shall, and thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. Now I don't think the Bible any expounds on that particular verse anymore, what happened to David's wives, but I believe it happened. God said it's going to happen. It must have happened, right? Yeah. So, David takes one guy's one wife. God lets the neighbor take all of Dave's wives. <coughs> all of Dave's wives. <laughs> Dave and Nate. <laughs> he said, For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all of Israel and before the sun. I believe somewhere in the Bible talks about our secrets being shouted from the housetops, don't it? In that day of judgment, there's nothing going to be hid. Nothing's going to be secret. Whatever we thought we'd done in secret is going to come out. But you know what? I think if God had forgiven us our sins, I don't think that's going to happen to you. Because he said he'd take our sins 
and throw them into the depths of the sea and never going to come up again. So if that's the case, he's not going to shout those from the housetops, only from the people that not accepted Christ as their Savior. David said to Nathan, I have, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan said unto David, The Lord also has put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Well, that was good news to David, wasn't it? But there was good news and bad news. You're going to pay for it. How be it? Because this deed has given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also is born unto thee shall die. <coughs> How did that give his enemies occasion to blaspheme? You can look at the same thing today, can't you? Well, that person, he's supposed to be a preacher. Exactly. He's supposed to be a Christian. And look what he's done. All the ministers have just kind of fulfilled that verse over and over again. Mm -hmm. So that's why he said that child's going to die. Not the child's not going to die because of the murder or because of adultery. It's because he caused people, the enemies, to blaspheme God. That's how holy God is. Let me just read you a, a verse here. If you want to turn to it again, Hebrews ten twenty six. He says. But if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fire indignation. I'm not really sure what that means, but I kind of think it means if you sin willfully and you know better, you're going to pay for it. Definitely. Bible teaches that all the way through. Yeah. He said, you know, there's no, if you sin willfully, he said there's no sacrifice for that sin. Because you know better already. But a certain fearful looking of judgment and fire and indignation. It says that Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David. It was very sick. We know the rest of the story how that David <clears throat> fasted and wouldn't eat anything. He said he laid on the ground for days praying to God. He said, I'm just hoping that God will change his mind. Remember, God told him he's going to die. And David said, Thank you, just do enough. Maybe I get God to change his mind. So uh, he wouldn't eat, wouldn't do anything. But then the child died, and David seen his servants whisper. He said, well, the child must have died. So he went and asked him, he said, did the child die? And he said, yes. He said, okay, go give me something to eat. He washed up, dressed himself up. And they said, we don't understand. You know, the way you acted while he was sick, now he's dead and you want all this, act like this. David said, the child can't be with me, but he said, I can go be with him. You know, David said, you know, I repent it. God, forgive me. I can go to heaven and be with a child. So, <clears throat> that's basically uh, where the story ends, except verse 24 says, And David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her, and she bare a son, and he called his name Solomon, and the Lord loved him. Isn't that something? God loved that child come out of a, an adulterous relationship, but God still loved him and he became king and God made him the wisest man on earth. Something what God can do with things that we mess up with. Mm -hmm. So, um, just kind of go over a couple thoughts here. There are three things that would happen to David if we just read them. His life would be full of violence. Violence in his family. If you know the story of David, you know that he had a son that raped his, his own half-sister. Well, then David's other son went and killed that guy, hit that brother. Then David had a son that tried to take over the kingdom from David. And even David's own general, Joab, 
kill that son. <coughs> so, like God said, the sword wouldn't ever leave the house of David of his life. We went over this. His wives would be given to his neighbors. That had to be humiliating, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Stand there and watch this happen in front of your own eyeballs and nothing would do about it. <clears throat> and then his son that was born from an adultery would die. Well, what some heartaches David went through, huh? Being king. Because of disobedience. Not only did it affect him, it affected his whole family, didn't it? We just told you what happened to things in his family. So, his family, some of his children hated each other. They killed each other. They despised their father because he tried to take his kingdom. All these things. You know, that might not happen to us in particular, but, you know, if we get ourselves in certain, certain situations, it's going to affect other people's lives. Good and bad. Good. If we do good, it's going to affect them good, and that's what we want to do. Well, that's a great lesson, David. Think about how David must have felt when David told him God had put away thy sins. Can you imagine he knew the depths he gave something to, but even though God put away his sin, sin still has consequences. It does have consequences. Thank you, Brother David. Anyone got something you want to share before we dismiss the prayer today? One thing. Uh, that scene between the King David and the prophet David mm -hmm. is not a scene that most uh, kingdoms and civilizations at that time would ever experience. Right. fact that there was somebody who could stand up for the king. That didn't exist in most uh, in most kingdoms or right. most uh, civilizations. That, that's what made the, the Jewish the Hebrew people uh, very unusual. The people of God had someone that could confront the king. Right, and I suspect that David hadn't had some thread of faith in God's love in his heart. Nathan would have never survive that because you know David had a thread of he had to had some, <coughs> some thread of faith in God in God in his heart because he didn't bat an eye at taking Bathsheba or setting up to hit on Uriah any of those things. So well, I think uh, Nathan had talked. God had talked to David through Nathan before, right? So David had to have a lot of respect for. Yeah, they had to recognize that was God talking to Nathan. Nathan moved his lips. God they just like some guy coming off the street or one of his servants that cleans the silverware and said, "Hey, right. buddy." <laughs> right. Yeah. Like the lady came in and told us she was carrying the the son of God. She had no track right. record. There's no reason for me to to believe her. Most civilizations had competing gods. Right. It wasn't the was God. All right. All right. That's pretty pretty. Anyone else? Well, thank you for coming tonight. Let's all stand. Uh, my church is regular Sunday morning. And we'll have Sunday evening church. And uh, we've got on the 21st is going to be our Thanksgiving dinner. After the morning service, we'll have a sign-up sheet and back for folks who want to bring a dish to pass or something. Ladies have a craft dinner on the 20th. Ladies have a craft dinner on the 20th. And uh, any other announcements? If not, then let's bow our heads and brother William, would you just miss us some prayer, please? Lord, we thank you for the service tonight. Thank you for this lesson. Lord, you ask that you be with us now as we go our separate ways. That you watch over and take care of us until we can once again gather in your name and worship your son. Yes, he's in your name. Amen.